Welcome back to another episode of Ballers, Beers, and Banter. I'm your host, Dave, here with me. Two running back studs, Aaron Jones and Derrick Henry. Anthony Moose. Hello! What's up? You guys can... Uh, that was pretty good. You guys can fight over who's who, but... Holy smokes. Those are two... Uh, two talk about stud performances. Yowzas. This is, the, this is the first year I've owned Derrick Henry in a league, so I'll take Derrick Henry. Sure. And I own uh, Aaron Jones well, in two yeah. leagues now, and Derrick Henry in one. So now, I'm now, now that he's elite... You've uh, you were you've selected him <laughs> in a few leagues. Um, you had him against me in one of our many many leagues tonight, uh, and of course we have him in our halftime uh, halftime bowl. So Aaron we're Jones, laughing, yeah. we're laughing, moving to two and zero. If you're not familiar with the halftime bowl, it's because you're not on halftime sports app and not joining us every Wednesday, 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Pacific. So do that because um, mm -hmm. it's awesome. Um, yeah, and might as well. Uh, plug the youtube here too since uh anthony's looking fresh coming off his soccer game moose's new beard trim my goodness moose just looking fantastic these days so yeah. you only get to enjoy that if you're um you know watching us on youtube and you should subscribe and hit the like and get all the updates on our latest youtube videos well there's 32 people who have subscribed so shout so out far. to those people yeah shout yeah. out to our subs appreciate it Die hard fans. Subs and dubs. That'd be like some sort of cool segment idea there. Special segment for our subscribers. Um, guys, we already, you guys did a great job recapping the injuries from Sunday um, and points of interest. So we don't need to go through that again. I do have a couple bones to pick with you guys, though, from last night's uh, oh, episode. Boy. We'll get into it as we go. Um, but, Anthony, why don't you hit us first with uh, some more up-to-date news on some of these injuries and and such yeah so i'll start off with uh darrell henderson uh we forgot to mention him we, we talked a little bit about him junior uh, junior yes not his father no. um we talked a little bit about him in the in-game recap but uh i wanted to mention that he has a rib cartilage injury but they they are optimistic that uh that he'll play this weekend they'll be checking again with him on friday to, to make sure everything's okay um i, I don't think i, you I should wouldn't be get your hopes hard. up get a handcuff oh yeah yeah for sure sony, sony michelle. michelle time guys you laughed at me when i picked him in uh in our main league in like well, the I mean, 13th round but well when darrell henderson is healthy yeah let's like wait, darrell Hender uh, let's wait and see if sonny michelle yeah. can even do anything because Darrell Henderson Jr. hasn't been anything great so far. Like, nothing to write home about, especially not worth the draft capital uh, that he went, uh, of where he went. Would uh, you email home about him? I I would I would not email home, which no. is, like, easier than writing home. Would you text home about him? I wouldn't even text home. I wouldn't, wow. even, I wouldn't even ask Siri to send a text home. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think he deserves at least a voice text, Daryl Henderson Jr. But anyways, that's just me. Um, moving on, Mike McCarthy says, Amari Cooper has bruised ribs. I mean, they haven't said any... Same thing. A lot, I of that going any, around. a lot of that going around. Any kind of ribs injury... Yeah don't expect them to play or don't expect them to play at a high level. Any kind of rib injury immediately makes it difficult to breathe. And in a sport where you have to be running at top speeds, it's not going to go well. Yeah. Also, they tend to hit you in and around the rib area. The ribs. Yeah. yeah. Um, no matter what position you play. So. <laughs> but knowing Amari Cooper and how he always plays with an injury, if he is in game, I mean, you probably have no choice to start him, but he ain't going to do no, well. You always have a choice. Well, yeah, and you guys talked about it last night. Do it's, it. CD Lamb season is upon us. Yep. And uh, Cedric Wilson, he should be on our waiver wire episode today. He for sure is. Well, we yeah. mentioned him yesterday as a, I know. I know you yeah. did. And I know you guys were concerned with Dak, and we could talk about that. But the, the Chargers have a tremendous defense, and it was like one of those good NFL games with not a lot of points scored. So, But don't worry. Dak will bounce back. He'll be great. Yep. Uh, so well, it, Justin it, Herbert, but it, but it wasn't even it wasn't even a, a bounce back for Dak. They just ran the ball. Dak had a great game in, in terms of yeah. Dak's stats. He had a great game. They just ran the ball all day. To, the Tony yeah. Pollard and Ezekiel Elliott show. I know. Yeah. More on the Tony Pollard side, but we'll get into that later. Mm -hmm. uh, Texans QB Tyra Taylor will be out for a while with a hamstring he injured in Sunday's loss to the Browns. Per source. 
They're still waiting for the swelling to Who, go down. Uh, who's Source? Uh, rap Sheet. Oh, okay. I thought it was some At guy rap named sheet. Source. N no. <laughs> <laughs> um... Come yeah, on, so man. that was reported last night. Taylor won't play Thursday. So it's a short week for the Houston Texans. They're playing Thursday. So, yeah. So da Davis but Mills. More importantly than Davis Mills. And it's yep. da isn't it David? It's David Mills. I kept no, it's I Davis. Dave it's Davis definitely Mills. Davis. Speaking Davis? Of, as a David, I know yep. that he's not in our boat. It's okay. Davis Mills. Uh, but more importantly than Davis Mills, um, yep. they've already ruled out Deshaun Watson for week three. Yep. So even, which is... Uh, especially with all the quarterback injuries this week, it it could be interesting that they maybe maybe they will trade him. They don't want him to get hurt, yep. so they maybe maybe yeah. they really will trade him to the Miami Dolphins. He's Deshaun Watson's turning into one of those like super expensive decorative pieces you get for your like living room that you never end up putting up. You know what I mean? Like maybe you you anticipated you'd put it up for the holidays, but you're like nah, nah, don't even do that. He's just sitting there, hundred and seventy five million dollar. Third string QB. It's just ridiculous. Well, he's not a third string QB. He's he's still on the, the roster. He is. Yeah, on the right. roster he is. Yeah. But uh yeah, it's a it's it's a expensive game they're playing. That it is. Like at what point at what point does keeping him and paying him to do nothing outweigh <laughs> what they're asking to trade for him? Well, obviously they haven't reached that point yet, but yeah, I don't know. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, like, it, how it, much? It, how much money do you yeah. funnel away before you realize, like, okay, like now, no matter what we get in a trade, we've lost money, and we've and we we're not getting the trade we want. Well, at this point, this is so. If let's say if two is injury is significant, I know it's not that significant, but let's say it was significant, that would be the prompt. Like, you're not going to get a better offer than right now. Mm -hmm. This is it, right? So. Um, either pull the trigger or, you know, or you're, you're in trouble. Yeah, you're exactly. Stuck. It's just, I still, it's just crazy that I think they can get so much from, especially now that we know that the off uh, field issues, um, have kind of like quieted down a little bit. It looks like he will be able to play games. So just, you can get a bunch of picks for him there. If they're worried about like, oh, he's a franchise quarterback and we're we're screwed if we get rid of him, you you need yeah, a lot all, more than just of... a franchise quarterback. They need draft picks to build around uh, to cr make your team whole. He'll he'll likely be able to play until February, and February is when all the legal action will take place. So yeah. the NFL has already said that they are not going to suspend him until there is. Uh, a yeah, legal a decision or, uh, yeah. yeah, in the courts or whatever, and then they'll make their decision once a, a result is determined. But yeah, up until then, but that's what, you know, that's what trading for him could cost you is in February, he's suspended. Yeah. Yeah. Could be the case. Anyways, could be the case. Moving on. Uh, Raiders coach John Gruden told reporters that QB Derek Carr who injured his ankle on Sunday, had an MRI today, which is Monday, and thinks he'll be able to play this week. That said, Gruden called him questionable. Um, a little bit before this, there was uh, it, it came out that he was just flat out questionable uh, with an ankle injury. So this is a little bit alarming. Questionable is never a good sign. It's usually, I think it's a 50-50. Probable is usually what you want to see. Um, I, don't I, I, I don't think it's I don't think it's a worry. I mean, he did come in after coming he off, came and finished, right back. Yeah, he came yeah. right back, finished the game. I'm sure he just has a bit of swelling, and they're just monitoring it. Yeah, he should definitely sit out practices this week and and heal. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, they don't. I think we said, should be calling him. I think we should be calling him Derek Cadillac at this point. Because he's been pretty. Pretty good so far, gentlemen. Is he in the I, top twelve? Moose, you called him being in the was, top twelve. I was just about to say he's uh, he's having a surprisingly good season. I mean, it is only week two, so let's not get carried away. I'm getting but, carried away. Um, yeah, I'm it's getting exciting. carried away. It's <laughs> this, but this is what Derek Carr does. He gets you fired up, and then and then not so fired up. I'm going to let you down, and so do the uh, the Raiders. But hey, man, they beat Baltimore and Pittsburgh. It's pretty yep. legit. Yep. Pretty legit. Um, another one. Zach, so Zach Ertz was placed uh, has tested positive for the COVID nineteen. Uh, the COVID nineteen for COVID nineteen. <laughs> um, he is vaccinated. So 
Uh, there's a chance he can be cleared. They're playing on Monday night uh, this coming week. Who even, I'm, I'm who t- does he even is is he even someone you right. want on your roster? No, not really. It's, it's the Dallas always, Goddard show. R- no, not even is it? <laughs> not even. Th- this is what I was just going to say. The only point I'm bringing up this news is because everybody last week was like, "Oh, Ertz is hampered by injury. Slot in Goddard." No, these two like. Ertz is going to stick around. Ertz is going to do nothing. And Goddard is going to suffer because Ertz is there. Whether Ertz is hampered by injury or he's not, um, or or he's just recently recovered from COVID, he's going to affect Goddard. So don't slot in Goddard. Uh, I mean, Hertz has done pretty decent without him. So ignore, like, forget about the tight ends in Philly right now. Until Ertz is officially out, Don't Goddard is not a 100% start. So keep an eye out for that. I would I would definitely not forget about Goddard considering if no, you have him on forget. your team. Right. If you have him on your team, you drafted him in the mid rounds. And there's been two games so far. I know you guys on the podcast yesterday said, we'll let Dave talk Philly San Fran, which I watched um, the whole game. This was um, San Francisco defense came to play. And, this, and so did Philly, actually. Philly's a good team this year. Um, they, San Francisco had zero first downs in the first quarter. Um, and Philly was held to a field goal in the first quarter. So it was, it was a defensive battle. Um, and uh, Jalen Hurts, you asked him about Jalen Hurts, looked fantastic. Pro football focus ranks him second only to Tom Brady after the first two weeks for QB, um, uh, QB rankings. Um, for QB, sorry, for passer rating or QB ratings. Um, so I wouldn't worry too much. I wouldn't panic too much. I think Devonta Smith will bounce back. Uh, Dallas Goddard will bounce back. I mean, it's tight ends. Tight ends. George Kittle. Look, are you happy? There was with only Kittle? seven. George Kittle got two points. There was only you know, seven tight ends to tight ends. double digits. I know. This week, it's it's. it's this not is why good Moose. So this is why Moose tells her. He tells you all the time. Get a good tight end. Um, George Kittle had more than two points. I got at two point seven. <laughs> Last this past. In uh, uh, you have him in PPR, Moose. This is ha- I'm talking about half PPR. Yeah, I have him in half PPR. Oh yes, two point seven. Okay, yeah, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so I'm just gonna rattle off some info, uh, some some updates for some However, hold of the on, wide receivers. Because we're talking about George Kittle here, so let's just uh, let's just clear the air because he's gonna have a great week next week. All the running Probably. backs, all the running backs are injured, and um, T.J. Hawkins, Hawkinson just torched Green Bay, so George Kittle will likely light it up against Green Bay. Yeah, he'll, yeah, I mean, he's gonna be he'll 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 bounce back. It's George Kittle, right? And if we're talking yeah, San Fran, it's not it's not George Kittle, it's San Francisco. It's San Francisco. Yeah. And they they were struggling um against Philadelphia, but I think they'll be fine against Green Bay. You talked about San Francisco and the situation there. You, you incorrectly Moose, said that Elijah Mitchell did not get the majority of the work. He got 17 carries to Jamichael Hasty's 5 and Trey Sermon's 1. And uh, Jamichael Hasty only got those carries when uh, Elijah Mitchell left the game. Mitchell looked fantastic, so fast, so explosive. The concern now, well, first of all, he well, left with, the, with the a quote, shoulder injury. The quote was that he would be loaded up and just be running all game. Yeah, he had 17 carries. Yeah, but he didn't do so well. No, he didn't. I mean, Philadelphia, Philadelphia defense was good, but he looked very effective. Uh, he was running really well, but <laughs> now San Francisco. So Sermon and Hasty both got hurt, both fumbled. And now uh, San Francisco went and signed... Lamar Miller and uh, who's the other one? Duke, Duke Johnson. Johnson. Duke Johnson. So it's not it's not good. If you you know got Elijah Mitchell on the waiver wire, you're not you know you're not excited about that news because um, uh, they just keep finding it's like oh great right, all the other running backs are gone <laughs> all the other running backs are gone it's just Elijah Mitchell they're like no no bring in two more two more please another two another two. <laughs> just keep bringing in <laughs> running backs it's, it's crazy it's sign them all Todd and Todd Gurley still available. <laughs> Yeah, but he wasn't that great last year. Okay, so moving on, uh, wide receiver news. Will Fuller, uh, Roman numeral five, who is out Sunday due to a personal issue, is back in the building, and the team expects him to be available for this week. Uh, might not be the best week to start him, uh, uh, since we don't <laughs> know what's percent. going on. With- <laughs> yeah. Um, Kobe and- could be okay. And since we're on the Miami news there, I guess I'll throw in Tua. He, uh, he went uh, and got some more tests done this morning. He has bruised, bruised ribs as well. Um, it didn't reveal any major issues. X-rays were negative. Uh, it's going to be a pain tolerance thing with him. So um, well, Judging by he, how much pain he was in, it's yeah. going to be tough. 
and functionality as well. So I mean, Drew Brees like, like cracked. Drew Brees cracked a few. How tough was Drew Brees last year? He cracked a few ribs and bruised and, ribs and bruised yeah. lungs. And, and I just remember Romo did it as well. One game. Yeah. Did and it, a punctured did lung from his broken rib. Which was Yikes. Ridiculous. Um, Jarvis Landry uh, isn't ruling out uh, Jarvis. Uh, Kevin Stefanski isn't ruling out Jarvis Landry for this week. He has a sprain MCL. Well, Anthony, uh, I'm sure Jarvis Landry is also not ruling out Jarvis Landry this week. So you were right. The first time. <laughs> um, they're playing the Bears this week. Um, so if I, he's playing. I would through, rule out Jarvis Landry. Yeah, then. I would rule him out for this week too. He's playing the Bears. If he's hampered by injury, the Bears defense is really good. Not the best week to play him. Uh, Deontay Johnson. All I have is he avoided a long-term knee injury. So that's that's great news. Slot him in. LaVisca Cheneau, who injured his shoulder uh, during Sunday's loss. LaVisca Cheneau Jr., who's injured his shoulder during Sunday's Thank loss you. to Denver, is expected to be able to play Sunday at home to Arizona per Urban Meyer. But are we even excited about Visca? No, I think uh, Jacksonville is terrible. Um, I think Marvin Jones Jr. is maybe the only start on offense there since he's kind of like the Tyler Boyd. He's the reliable target. He's the most experienced receiver there. So you can play him if you're desperate, but I would avoid Jacksonville right now, maybe with the exception of James Robinson. Even James Robinson. I mean, you probably got to start him with where you drafted him, but no, he hasn't been lighting it up. Uh, no, he has not. Five, um, points, and, five <laughs> points and seven points. And Travis back -back isn't even there. Yeah, I know. So, yeah, you're right. Anthony's trouble. Well, week one was DJ Chark. Week two was Marvin Jones. So, you know what? Probably will be LaVisca this week, but we'll, we'll see. Uh, yes. rotate. They'll rotate him. Um, almost done here. Uh, Bears, uh, some Bears news. Andy Dalton uh, uh, is the Bears. team's starting quarterback. If he's healthy, they're, like I mentioned yesterday, they're, they're saying he may have avoided serious injury as well. I don't know what that means. He was hurt. Um, I don't know if he just needs to sit out uh, the week at practice and heal. Uh, but keep an eye on that. Uh, all the people waiting for Justin Fields to come in. He didn't, again, I'll mention, he didn't look that great when he did come in. He almost lost the game for the Bears by throwing a late interception. Um, so, yeah, Andy Dalton is not going to wow anyone, but at least he he protects the ball um, and he can move the offense. So for the Bears, that's all they need at this point. If I recall, Anthony, did you watch the whole game? I'm pretty sure the interception was the wide receiver's fault. Was it not? Uh, I can't remember. No, I don't he, remember. He, I kept he, switching. He looked, he looked fine, and he's so well, athletic. He looked fine. So yeah. if he if he came in and looked amazing, then they'd be like, ah, maybe we'll think about it. But he looked fine. Andy Dalton is also fine. But I think Andy Dalton I don't know if he's is fine. less risky than Justin Fields at this point. I think Fields still needs to learn under him because when I was watching him, he he always tries to. Is he going to learn how pass. to throw interceptions? Who Andy Dalton? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's he gonna learn? You don't from think Andy Justin Dalton? Fields is gonna throw? Justin Fields doesn't look. No, but for you said he's gonna learn from Andy Dalton. Give me a break. Uh, I th I still think Detroit Lions Week Four Fields coming in, sticking to it. Uh, too much pressure. There's just too I much pressure. I mean, even wrong. even even amidst a knee injury, they said Dalton's the starter. Yeah. You will see. Uh, we yeah. shall see. We shall see. And last one I'll mention here, unless you guys have somebody else after. Uh, Colts QB Carson Wentz is dealing with injuries to not just one ankle, but both. <laughs> uh, he's having tests done today to determine the, to determine the severity of his sprain suffered yesterday. But uh, Jacob... I, I think you just give up at this point. Yeah. You had it's uh, not... surgery on your foot. Both ankles are gone. Just take a seat. Just rest. They're not, they're not, his ankles aren't gone, Moose. They went. <laughs> they went. They went. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, so uh, keep an eye on that. But, uh, I mean, you're not too thrilled about it. If you thought uh, drafting him super late, if you went late QB in your draft and you went with him. So what are your, uh, what are your thoughts on Jacob Eason coming in? I, I kind of I mean, like it. He hasn't looked bad. And he's healthy. <laughs> I'm I mean, all for it. I, I, think, I think Jacob Eason, I, they should just do it. Just... I don't think the, I don't think he'll himself, he, he'll, he himself won't be a fantasy option as a QB, but can he support the other fantasy options? 
Potentially, yeah. The, the Colts are really, really good. Good defense, great O-line. Um, it's too bad because Michael Pittman had himself a game yeah, last week, solid. like about 20 points and a half PPR. So, But without Wentz, I don't know. And then Jonathan Taylor has been just – he's had plenty of opportunity, really good yardage, but – He's missing um, some of those those big games, big number of games that you'd uh, you'd like oh, from him. So still week two. Oh, and week yeah, two. I did forget one. Um, uh, Josh Jacobs is day to day, very questionable for the game this Sunday. So that's Kenyon Drake, who you're not very excited about, and Darren Waller. Well, I mean, uh, replacement running backs as well. Yeah. No, and him. and here's here's one here's one. I think this came from Seeger. I don't remember when. But keep your eyes on Foster Moreau. Yeah. He's pretty good. He's pretty good. Because but a second tight end on, on the team. Yeah, but they're just no. shutting down Waller. They're shutting down Waller, and then Foster Moreau becomes that tight end option. So keep but your it's eyes. it's hard to tell when he'll produce, right? But this you is it, to... but that's what I'm saying. I'm just saying just, just watch. Yeah. I'm not saying I'm not saying do anything right now. Let's see how the season plays out. But he's he's a name that, you know, on Sundays, maybe flip it over to the Raiders game. See what Foster Moreau is doing. Yep, yep, I mean, yep. shut down. Pittsburgh's defense is very good. So They're usually good against the tight end too, I believe. Yeah, they got great linebackers, um, great front seven. They were putting Derek Carr under all sorts of pressure. So, yeah, I wouldn't. I, I like, mean, Darren Waller I, bounce again, back. Obviously, I, you know, I think Darren Darren Waller is fantastic. He's going to have an amazing season. But all I'm saying is, if defenses can contain him, let's see what Foster Moreau can do. Yeah, I disagree. But how about Dan Carlson, though? Moose's Ooh, uh, kicker, yeah. kicker uh, extraordinaire. Yeah. He, so you'll finally listen to me about a kicker, but he, but you won't, you won't just even consider Foster Moreau down the line. Not right now. Well, I, I mean. think, I think Dar like if Darren Waller had seven targets, caught five. Foster Moreau had like two. Just happened one of them. One of them had to be a touchdown. Yeah. So. Yeah, I'm just saying. He's, well, he's, a name, he's a name to jot well, down and uh, and watch. I'll yeah. jot it. I'll jot it. I'll jot it down. Foster Morrow. Not less Row Morrow. All right. That's it for headlines. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Daniel Carlson, we were saying 17 points, which wow. was, uh, which in my kicker only league translated to 50 points. I think, uh, I think I had the most points in the league by, uh, by, a couple, a uh, couple dozen, I think. Yeah, so, uh, I mean that bad. fifty. What he had, like fifty-five yarder. It's beauty. He's good. He's a good kicker, and he keeps getting the opportunity. But and his um, backup is but, Prater, who I suggested, and I think yeah. you said you still would have won if you played Prater. Uh, yeah, I think so. I think Prater got like thirty-three points or something like that. Yeah, yeah. He but did. Uh, but Dan Carlson's, you want him because the Raiders are always going to be in that field goal range more often than than any other team, I think. But not always scoring touchdowns. Yeah, they get they get stymied. They get stymied. That's exactly stymied. what you want. Um, speaking of getting stymied, the Detroit Lions got stymied by the Green Bay Packers tonight. Rodgers is back. Aaron Jones saw what Derrick Henry did, and he's like, "I'll do almost as good as that. I can't quite top you, but I'm going to try my best." I had four tutties. Um, Devontae Adams was in the game. The Packers are back, and we. For fantasy football, at least, can we everybody breathe a sigh of relief? Who had any Packers on their team? Well, I just uh, I just want to mention something. So, um, you, go ahead. I did say, don't worry about Aaron Rodgers because it's Detroit. Oh, it's a revenge whoa. game. <laughs> controversial. <laughs> uh, it was controversial on this podcast because it was true. It was no, it's true. It, <laughs> there was no oh, controversy. I just said. A... I just said, if you have someone on your bench, you can drop. It's it's a safe thing to pick up Jameis Winston in the event that Aaron Rodgers does not play like he did tonight. And which is where I was going to continue. And how did Jameis Winston uh, do he this did, week? He did very poorly. Very poorly. <laughs> you know what it was? So, but we can't... Jameis, we can't, Jameis we can't, must have stolen Aaron Rodgers' mojo like in Space Jam for <laughs> one week. And Rodgers was like, what the heck's happening? And then it was gone. He, but he I, do, I do understand we, your point. We can't see the future, but it's good to prepare for it. Right. But, like I mentioned, there's a reason why he wasn't drafted on teams. If we were so sure Jameis Winston would be a productive quarterback, this is why I said... Man, Anthony, nobody said anything about drafting him. We're talking no, no, about Bob but, Waivers. But, but, let we're me talking explain. Waivers, Anthony. Yeah, but you're saying... Not talking regular waivers, draft. Yeah, but you're waivers. saying 
off of one game that he had barely uh, not even 200 yards five touchdowns i said it's it's that's not a positive thing for a quarterback to swoop off of waivers. There are plenty of other quarterbacks that are putting up 200 yards, multiple touchdowns. Anthony, I said Anthony, it was. Wait, who, do you, wait. who do you have on your bench? Yeah, I bet there's a bunch of guys you could drop on your bench. Can you, to, to can you let me finish my point? Blanket. My point is if you said to pick up a quarterback <laughs> to back up Aaron Rodgers if he's bad, Jameis Winston, in my opinion, was not a good one because he hasn't proven himself. And we say plenty of times on this podcast that week one, don't, don't overreact. So go with somebody that yeah, you know Anthony, is going to. Produce. He's not he's not on your bench forever. You can just drop him this week. But my point was Jameis Winston else. wasn't the guy to pick because Anthony the stat has, line was not good. Anthony has Carlos Hyde on his bench. I think you could drop him. Yeah. <laughs> uh well, the well, point is uh we say don't ba- don't take unnecessary uh quarterbacks and tight ends on your bench. There are plenty of better no, no, during the draft, Anthony. Now we're in season. Now we're in season. You can be if you need to. There you are can bring in a back quarterback in the in the every event. week. There were four quarterbacks this week. I would have taken over Jameis Winston. That was my point. That I was surprised that Jameis Winston was your guy. If you needed to back up Rodgers, why not? Why not? What, because what if he, he was what very if he inefficient. Has an, what, yeah, but what if he has an incredible season like he did in Tampa Bay for fantasy? Now, now you have him. Okay, great. So he's showing us that he's going to be more robust. Drop him. Pick up a more reliable quarterback if that's what you want. He doesn't have to stay on your bench forever now. You know who people should pick up? Is this guy, um, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, Kyler Murray. Is that how you say it? Um, yeah, I'd pick him up. He's pretty good. <laughs> My QB finisher for the for the year. If he, if My he's, if he's, word. If he's on your waiver wire in your league. Uh, no, that was a joke. He obviously I know. isn't. Yeah. My goodness. Kyler Murray is the man right now. He is. He looks unstoppable. He started last year strong too, though. You got to. He's got to be healthy. Got to keep him healthy. Yep, for sure. Daniel Jones up there. Jalen Hurts still in the top twelve. The Jalen Hurts versus Sam Darnold uh, is going to be fun because it's. It'll be Sam Darnold's playing well. It's going to be close. I like it. All right. I like it. Let's move on. Can we move on? Oh, yeah. great. Can we talk? So we don't need to talk Packers lines anymore. Yes, That's we it. do. Okay, because Jared Goff <laughs> is an absolute disaster. <laughs> do you want to you want to go out? You want to Goff on him? No, yes. but it was it was uh, in the first half. Uh, or approaching the, the the halftime. Jared Goff actually looked like maybe he changed. Maybe the problem was Sean McVay and the Rams. Maybe Jared Goff suddenly could turn the Detroit Lions team around. They had a great first drive for a touchdown. You know, then it sort of, you know, you could tell it was falling apart a little bit. But then second half, it was just a snowball effect of fumbles, interceptions, drop balls, just absolute disaster. And Jared Goff looked just like Jared Goff again. I mean, it was raining, so. Yeah, well, Aaron Rodgers <laughs> didn't seem to be bothered by the rain. Yeah, Aaron Rodgers looks like, um, like he went, you know, when like in those, movies of space where someone goes really far away and they come back and everyone's aged like a hundred years and they haven't, he looks like he, he got left on earth. Everyone else left, came back and he's aged like a thousand years. He, he yeah. just looks terrible. His haircut. He, it looks like good. an old Oak tree. Yeah. Uh, on the Detroit Lions side of the ball guys, um, besides Jared Goff playing poorly, TJ Hawkinson is awesome. He is going to threaten for tight end one once Gronkowski settles down and stops <laughs> getting two tutties every game. Um, he, he looks fantastic. He is the guy in Detroit. And I, I think DeAndre Swift could end up being, I know he only got nine points this week, but he looks good and they pass to him. They run him a lot. He's going to get tons of volume. Yeah. Um, and they're always behind. Um, and Jamal Williams also looks good, but. The way they used the way that you were using DeAndre Swift, it definitely looked like he would get more than nine fantasy points. It looked like you, see, every he ran, play yeah, there, he ran so well. It was like, oh, yeah. it's like 10 yards. Nice. But <laughs> yeah. yeah, I guess he didn't get the touchdown. So, yeah. but um, I think he's going to be good. And then what are, you, what are your thoughts? So I really, I was high on Amon Ross St. Brown at, to emerge as a, the top receiving actual wide receiver option on Detroit. So far though, it looks like Quintus Cephas, second year player um, who's a bit of a bigger body, quick, Reliable hands, uh, and he did well today. Um, well, is, is he someone to target on the waiver wire? 
Yes, I, I would I would say so, but with low expectations. He's okay. he's definitely a, a bye week candidate, and I I wouldn't discount uh, Amon Ross St. Brown just right right away. I mean, we everybody was hyping right. him. Everyone was hyping him up for the same reasons that Michael Carter was hyped up. He he should have been you know that young rookie body that comes in and goes ahead of all these sort of has beens that were in Detroit. But then you, we got to dial it back and remember that he's a rookie. So maybe it'll take him. It's only week two, and maybe it'll take him a couple of weeks to really get in a rhythm, especially if Jared Goff is not doing so well. Obviously, that's going to reflect on the wide receivers. But I would hang on to him and, and see what the next couple of weeks uh, provide him with at least. Okay. You heard it here first. Good. Enough on Packers lines then? Yep. Super. So now we can get into our waiver wire pickups of the week nope or guillotine there you go let's Maybe go guillotine. all right so um last sunday anthony and i uh debuted this segment um and now we've pushed it to monday nights so dave could uh, also participate Boom. and um so the well i guess it's the monday night guillotine are players who you would expect to perform well haven't been performing well and then do you put them in the guillotine or not do you do you give them the chop and send them packing off your team replace them with someone else or do you hang on to them and uh ride it out so the first one this one is uh, it's a pretty big name in in most cases and uh, i think i think it'd be a difficult choice but i don't know anthony's opinion of him yesterday uh you know might get some difference of opinions here clyde edwards hilaire Yikes. Yeah. Expected um, big things from him on a high powered offense, and he seems to be the lowest powered yeah. part of that offense. You how, ain't how can you cut him though? You can't yeah. how can you okay. well, let's say let's say cut or sell low. Yeah, or, so or just I'd hold or trade. I'd hold. I'd, hold. I'd hold he's bound to have a good game at some point. No. Uh, well, maybe. I guess. I guess is this like a keep trade cut situation here? Yeah, I w- I would say you're not cutting him from your team. I say you hold on to him, like Dave said, but you're not starting him. You bench him. Uh, you're benching him. Mm-hmm. I'm going to bench him. I own him in one league. I almost traded for him before the season started. Uh, to uh, I don't know if Dylan's listening right now. I offered him Tyler Lockett for Clyde Edwards Hilaire. He says Lockett is a bust this year, and I'm sticking with Clyde hmm. Edwards Hilaire. And I'm so opinion. glad he declined. Wow. Okay, perfect. Wow. All right. Next one up. Here we go. This one is uh, this one will hit Dave right in the old uh, sentimental region. <sighs> oh no, <laughs> Robert AJ Brown. Oh, okay. Why would that hit me there? I I drafted zero Robert Woods this year. No, but you're no usually you were very the, big on Robert Woods last season. Two seasons ago, last yeah. Two seasons. Oh, last two seasons, seasons ago. Okay. Last season. Okay, La- you're right. Last season, last season, I correctly predicted that Robert Woods would finish ahead of Cooper Cup. This year, I was not so certain, uh, and clearly, it's the Cooper Cup show with Matt Stafford. Stafford found his guy. It's uh, Cooper Cup. Um, uh, what are his numbers? What are Woods' numbers? I would no. You got to keep him. I'd keep he him. finish with, I believe, yeah, ten point nine fantasy points week one against Chicago, nine point five against Indianapolis, and next week they have Tampa Bay. I'd put him on the trade block. I'd uh, I'd try to see what I could get for him. Yeah, I think uh, Anthony, you said it earlier in the season that Robert Woods is getting up there in age, and uh, I think that's it. He's uh, he's showing it. Um, he's not Stafford's favorite wide receiver. I would uh, I would at this point not cut him, but definitely see if I could find a someone who's more excited about Robert Woods. Yeah, especially with um, all these uh, wide receiver injuries. Yeah, it's a perfect time. This was not on purpose. Um, I did not pick players that are both. Uh, close and sentimental to you guys. It just happened this way as I was furiously Can't writing say, I would I would hold on to Robert Woods, personally. Sorry, go ahead. I'd hold. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Matt Ryan. Ugh. Are we looking elsewhere for uh, quarterback? Guillotine. Yes. Guillotine. guillotine. Hondo P. I also Hondo agree. P. Guillotine. Okay, Anthony, this one is... Oh, sorry, buddy. This Can we stay also... with Atlanta? Can we stay with Atlanta? You mentioned it yesterday. Kyle Pitts. What are you doing with Kyle Pitts? Because people, people are out there probably like, oh, man, 
He's, he hasn't been good so far, like five points, eight points. I, I think you 100% keep Kyle Pitts. Yeah. It's, well, well, it's only going to ramp up from here. Yeah, and plus we did we we did warn people that it, it would be like a freak thing or a once in a uh, in a in a wild thing where he would be a top tight end in his rookie year. We said at worst he'd be a mediocre tight end, which is what he is right now. So he still has the potential. His ceiling is a lot higher, but he's still a middle of the pack. And we said that's the risk with him. It's very hard for tight ends to have not, a big not only, first not, year. And not only would I not guillotine him, you should be trying to get him. Yeah, I think in it, in leagues that you're in. So if you don't have Hawkinson, Waller, Kelsey, these guys, try to go get Pitts right now. Yeah, what it's going to take is Mike Davis slash Corderell Patterson to have a better run game. Uh, Russell Gage has to step up and show the defense that he's a, he's a priority. And Calvin Ridley and, and Matt Ryan got to start you know, connecting and doing a better job at showing them that he's the, you know, the, the new Julio Jones in Atlanta and that'll open mm -hmm. things up for Kyle Pitts. And then I think it's just a field day from there on out. Oh, Moose, yep. that brings up another bone. I had to pick with you. You said, uh, stay away from the Atlanta backfields and Mike Davis is terrible. And what happened to the, you saying, don't we we said don't start him this week because of the Tampa Bay front seven and the Tampa Bay defense. Yeah. yeah. Mike Davis did a lot better than Zeke did against the Tampa Bay defense. So why, why all of a sudden, like, that's exactly what we pr projected whoa, 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 to happen. Whoa, whoa, whoa. When we say that he's uh, like, don't start him against the Tampa Bay defense. I don't care if he did better than Zeke. They both had under 10 fantasy points. And these guys we expect over in the double digits. So there, it doesn't matter if he beat him. But by why does four. that game, you're, you're going to cement your opinion on Mike Davis, the Tampa Bay game. Uh, I mean, I want to see what he does against the Giants this week. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, what, who did he play in week one? Philadelphia, who has a staunch defense. Okay, well, I mean, yeah. how many how many more weeks is it going to take? But th they're going to play this week, Giants. <laughs> okay, <laughs> all we'll right. See. So, all right, guys, one more week. Well, then... you guys were asking for beer bats over under, so I'm going to set my, Mike my, Davis. Quarter like, at... quarter up, Patterson had a great day against Tampa Bay, and he's not even a running back. I know he's not. He's not. And I say Mike Davis is good for 13 and a half points this week against the Giants. Half PPR. I hope so for Mike Davis owners. Okay. Okay. Anyways, no. we, we've gotten away from the guillotine. Sorry. So bringing it back. This one's for you, Anthony. Daniel Jones. Um, who, let me, let me, because yeah. he did have a fantastic week for yes. fantasy, but the way he's playing, could it could go either way he is a boomer bust quarterback and i think you are uh flying by the seizure pants every week if you're starting daniel jones yeah well one i don't know how many leagues he's rostered in if he is rostered he i would rather have him on your bench if you're going to keep a quarterback over winston a guy like winston or some other guys because of the running ability it looks like the giants like giants were a tire fire last year they're gonna be a tire fire this year but it looks like they're like he needs to do whatever he's got to do to get us points so i believe he will run more this year and that's where he'll make his fantasy points i, I was telling you that I, I had mentioned on the podcast i think it was on sunday or the episode before no, it was yesterday that I have in our Dynasty League, our 2QB League, that I have Matt Ryan and Daniel Jones, and I have to decide between the two of them. I give Daniel Jones the advantage because of the running ability. So if he is on your team, don't cut him because he's been playing well. Um, and other than I, that, he's a streamer. I try to trade him. Yeah, I try he's, to trade him. He's high value right now. I try to trade him. Yeah, I trade him for Daniel anything. Jones. Trade him for a bag of footballs. But like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Trade him for a bag of footballs. But like uh, Dave's... Uh, Jalen Hurts, uh, the running ability seems to be... It's important. Daniel Jones is fast. He, you know Daniel Jones is six foot five. Yeah. yeah. He, if he stopped hand. fumbling, like, he, he could be very good. I hope he figures it out. He could be very yeah, good. Me too. Yeah. Well, lots of Eli vibes from... Yeah. But Eli, yeah. Wasn't six, uh, old, Eli wasn't six foot Eli five, two, 220, and ran like the wind. I'll tell you that. Yeah. Well, But he could throw an interception <laughs> <laughs> with the best of them. Okay, here we got we got two more real quick. Well, not real quick because I'm sure there'll be a little controversy. We already spoke about this guy earlier tonight, James Robinson. What do you do? <sighs> Is it, you, you drafted him to be getting you points, and he's not getting you points. You bench him. I maybe not this week. Arizona. Arizona has given up a lot of points. 
but like you wait for a good game and trade yeah. him. Trade him to the highest bidder. As yeah, try yeah. start looking, start feeling it out. But I would probably this game against Arizona, he'll be a bit better, like double digits and maybe a little higher. Maybe scores a teddy or two. Trade him. Pull the trigger. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Okay. Um, and then the last one. This one is uh, doozy. Brandon Ayuk. Oh boy. What do you do? Yeah. Especially this week because he's, they're going to have yeah. to go to the pass game. He's so far uh, down there. Like Kyle Shannon, obviously, he has upset Shanahan. Like it goes Debo, Kittle, um, Chef, there's Sherfield, and then now there's Jawan Jennings. Uh, yeah. who has like, scored is, a touchdown. Is Brandon like, Ayuk the new Dante Pettis where he's just like, nah, I'm making you a nobody? And just not not had, ever going to play. He him. had one target. He he's, he has had one fantasy point so far. Yeah, they're against the Packers though on Sunday night. But what's crazy is last season, you know, it uh, he seemingly was a pro. Now he's been relegated to learning how to be a pro. Now he's a schmo. So yeah, I don't know. I don't know what he did. He must have made some kind of joke about uh, Kyle Shanahan or something. And, uh, <laughs> it's drop balls, blocking assignments. Um, I mean, I don't have the hard, I wouldn't have the, I wouldn't have the Jim Harbaugh's to drop him. (laughs) Moose. That was my joke from yesterday. I know it was fantastic. So I'm reusing. (laughs) Um, yeah, I wouldn't have the Jim Harbaugh's to, to drop him. Um, but he's another one. Like if he goes off against the Packers trade, 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 trade. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which sucks because we were pretty hyped. Well, at least I was that there would be this dual threat. In San Francisco with Ayuk and Debo and uh and they will have a dual threat. It'll be Debo and Elijah Mitchell. <laughs> well <laughs> that's what's coming. Debo's so good. You talked about it yesterday, but Debo's yeah. awesome. So that's it for the guillotine. We didn't cut too many people. I gotta Can find I some... Russell Gage. Uh cut. yeah, he's cut. He's a cut. Five points so far. Yeah, we I got one for you. We brought <laughs> it. he was a cut uh week one of guillotine. Oh, he lost his head in week one. Oh my goodness. Week one. I got one for you guys, David Johnson. Uh, he should have been. He should have been pre guillotine. The entire Texas offense is guillotine. Yeah, he should have shown up without, <laughs> without his head. <laughs> Harsh words, but uh, no. Except uh, Cooks, I wouldn't guillotine Cooks. I know, but now they don't. No, you know, he'll still be okay. Yeah, Cooks they're will be all, okay. They're all guillotined. I want nothing. Texas, Texas no, Cooks offense. is sneaky. You're gonna guillotine Cooks? Yeah, 14. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't want Cooks on my team. I don't want anything to do with Texas. Fourteen targets. Ooh, you can't leave those like numbers. Twenty-two points. He's had like back-to-back like twenty-point weeks. Uh, yeah. I'll trade him. I'll trade him to whomever. I don't know. I haven't been following any of the Texas stuff uh, since I'm super disappointed that Deshaun Watson is not playing. Mm. Um, after trading for him in the off season. Anyways, and I have a last one: James Connor, guillotine. Oh, big time guillotine. Yeah, guillotine. Agreed. Super yeah. disappointed. There you go. We got some guillotines in there. We chopped off some heads. There we go. Okay, someone to not guillotine, Elijah Moore. Yeah, yeah. Just making sure everyone knows because he had zero points week one or zero point two and six points this past week, but he had more targets. His time is coming. Yeah. yeah. And if you have any players that you want to know if they should be in the guillotine or not, or if you have no idea what a guillotine is, we can talk to you about the French Revolution, um, <laughs> and uh, and we can let you know if your players. Um, would be in the guillotine or not. You can email us, 3bfantasypod at gmail.com. Send us a message on Instagram and Twitter, and uh, we'll let you know. All right, all right, all right. Well, th- we went over who we have would guillotine or not, so now who would we scoop up to re- replace our headless, our headless fallen warriors? Waiver wire. Top waiver wire pickups of the week. Oh, by the way, can I just say, um, do you remember we titled last year's episode at this last Sunday's episode, the one you guys did yesterday, as week too many injuries to recap? Yeah. And then what happens in week two this year? A whole boatload of injuries again that you guys spent half the podcast talking about. Crazy. That's trippy to me. It, it, on, it honestly, like in a very basic way of looking at it, it makes sense to me. Um, But it's. It's, that's probably not the reality. I, I just assume that in week one, everybody goes out and goes like 100%. And then in week two, they're a little bit sore and they try to do it again. And then everything falls apart. Yeah. it Yeah. I guess it makes sense. <laughs> right? It does. Week two. Yeah. 
Um, I'll kick us off here. Please do. Um, kick it. Coming from your soccer game. Kick it off. Yeah. So Sterling Shepard seems to still be available on waiver wire. I think he's worth a pickup. It's kind of a similar situation to the Brandon Cook situation in Houston. It's a terrible team, but the ball's got to go somewhere. Uh, Darius Slayton dropping that big bomb uh, last Thursday, not yeah, looking not, good. Not the trust factor is not there. I think Sterling Shepard, as long as he's healthy, he will be the, the target leader for that team. So Sterling Shepard, pick him up. I told a couple people to start uh, to start him this past week uh, because they had wide receiver issues already. He got 13 points, and the week before, he also got into the double digits. Uh, I believe he did a little higher, around 15 or 16. So, And the Giants are playing the Falcons, both yes. two winless teams. One will emerge victorious. And uh, if it's the Giants, maybe. Hope, maybe. That's not, that's not true. I that's know. not true. It could, it could end in a draw. I know. Um, but if it's the Giants, it'll be on the back of Sterling Shepard. You're right, Anthony. We'll see how many touchdowns he can herd in. Mm. Shepard? Shepard huh? in. Yeah, yeah. No, I... Because I, Shepard's herd their flock. Oh, that too, yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay, what's All right. next? Who's, who's got the next one? Do you want oh, me to just wait, rattle wait. them? I, well, I thought, it, I thought it was your segment, so I thought you were taking the lead. Oh, well, um, waiver wire is everyone's segment. You're the waiver wire king. I thought you had... Uh, all right, I'll throw out another one. Um... <laughs> Oh, I mean, well, uh, uh, okay, I'll do it. <laughs> well, I guess uh, I'll I'll look for, for his opinion since he's the waiver wire guy. Um, Tony Pollard surprisingly still available in some leagues. Crazy, um, big time. Scoop ad. him, scoop him up, scoop him up. Uh, he's going to outperform Zeke some weeks, um, and they've they've stuck to their guns. And like they said in the preseason uh, or the off season that they were going to implement him more, give him more touches. They say true. And he's producing. So here, here's here's my only uh, caveat to this whole situation. Yes, um, I think there you're going to have games where the, where he does nothing though. And they're going to go he, they're going to go heavy CD Lamb, or you know like this week with a tough defense they'll go heavy on the run and great you'll score big with Pollard. But I think it's uh, you know pick him up because you want him there as a good handcuff. But it'll be it'll be a dicey run for sure. Yeah. I think it's going to be. I know I did say Philadelphia's defense is good. They're playing Monday night, Dallas Philly, but Monday night football, two ri divisional rivals. It's going to be a shootout. It's going to yeah. be awesome. Pollard, I think will, Pollard will get some. He'll get yeah. some. Um, next guy I have. Um, I was a little higher on him if Fitzpatrick would still be on the Washington football team, but Adam Humphreys. This is a guy that I want to suggest for the first, um, for maybe early before the season starts, pickup. Because Curtis Samuel, we knew, was most likely not going to play week one. And Fitzpatrick wanted Adam Humphreys on the team. So he comes in in the Curtis Samuel role. Uh, he produced even with uh, Taylor Heineke this past week. So I think Adam Humphreys is a guy that you should pick up. Depending on your situation on your team, you could start him in the flex. But I think he'd be matchup based. Uh, mm. and, but I think it's a guy you need to have on your team. He's 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 budget Cooper Cup. He's like he he he's Cooper Cup without the points. Like okay, well, Washington is is budget Rams. So yeah, not even they're like, <laughs> yeah. I, I'm not super excited about Adam Humphreys. <laughs> it's not an exciting pickup, but I mean, he's a guy that's going to get targets because there are injuries. Yeah, he had he caught seven of eight, and to be for honest, forty four yards. <laughs> he had yeah. seven points this past week. Like that's. That's what you're doing with eight targets? I don't know. But uh, with these slot receivers, uh, you know, eventually we've seen with guys like Cole Beasley, he's made a name for himself. He's had some years oh, where he's made like, a name for himself. All right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> for other reasons as well. But there was a bunch of years like in Dallas, there were some games where he went off, some he didn't. Then he found his place over in Buffalo. I think Adam Humphreys, uh, he's got a good situation right now with Curtis Samuel out. I think take advantage of him now. Uh, when Curtis Samuel comes back, then that's when you maybe guillotine him. And I wouldn't even waste. I wouldn't even waste it. Uh, Hunter Renfro, same type of player. I'd rather have Hunter Renfro. Derek Carr having an MVP like season. Yeah, I said it. Um, Ooh. And <laughs> Hunter Renfro gets plenty of targets, but actually does stuff with them. He's a good yards after the catch kind of guy. He's so sneaky. He's terrible at yards after the catch. I don't think so. 
Yeah, he 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 dives he dives and falls a lot when he. Catches he's not going to drag people, but he's he's sneaky. He's he's shifty. I take him over Adam Humphreys. Who'd you rather have, Moose? Him or Adam? Oh, no, Adam I I would rather have Hunter Renfro. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you, buddy. Right. But he's not a. I wouldn't say he's a yards after carry monster, but he definitely gets targeted a lot. Um. Oh, this would have been good for the guillotine segment as well. Maybe we can address it. Um. So Zach Pascal is also available in lease. This is two weeks in a row he's been into the double digits. Um, uh, touchdown, touchdown. We, it's touchdowns. It is touchdowns. the quarterback situation, we already sort of been over this. Yeah. I don't but know. Um, we didn't see what's his name, your your boy there. I think he's dealing with an injury, but we haven't heard. He is. Yeah. No surprise. No surprise. Paris, Paris Campbell. Surprise. Yeah, Paris, Paris Campbell's Campbell. injured. And uh, we don't wish it upon him, but uh, the last three seasons he's been injured. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think Zach Pascal's uh touchdown, touchdown dependent kind of guy. Yeah, but, but but what's interesting is they're just hitting him real short. He caught five on six targets for 38 yards and one touchdown. I mean, if he's getting targeted that much, you have to imagine that he's going to break one off for run. Um I don't know. It, it keep an eye on him. I wouldn't have him at the top of the list of who to get on the waiver wire, but keep an eye on him. He seems well, to be I mean, the second target. Well, I was going to say right now he's the only other wide receiver there. Besides it's, it's, Pittman. Well, yeah, it's yeah, the only yeah. other wide receiver. It's Mike Michael Pittman and and Zach Pascal and then what Jack Doyle was the next guy? Yeah. Jack Doyle rules. So, uh yeah, I definitely think uh, Zach Pascal gets in there for consideration. I wouldn't be excited about it though. Yeah, but uh, if if you don't get your uh, if you don't get a Hunter Renfro, um, or uh, Sterling Shepard, or Sterling Shepard, you know, I uh, maybe I, maybe I'd go now. reach for a Zach Pascal if you really need a wide receiver. Do we repeat names from last week? Are we allowed to do that? To remind well, yeah, people, we're allowed hey, to do whatever hey, we, we want. Then pick them up. All right, so I'm going to remind people who are listening. Kenneth Gainwell. Uh, looked very good uh, against the 49ers pass, in a pass-catching role. Um, so did Miles Sanders. They, they got some some mojo going. So Kenny Gainwell scooped him up before um, he's gone. If if Miles Sanders were to go down, we never wish that upon anyone, um, he'd instantly be in that uh, RB2 kind of kind of role. Um, and even right now, he's still getting used in the pass game. Yeah. I scooped, Especially PPR. I scooped so, him up to replace uh, Josh Jacobs this week. Wasn't complaining. It was a PPR league, so I think I got like seven, almost eight points. No, he got more than that, I think. No, he got 6.2 and half point PPR, and he had two receptions. Okay. And he had a so two-point right. conversion. So yeah. I'm going to disagree with you guys. I would say not to pick him up because both the Philly backfield, like they'll serve their purpose their purpose for real football, but I think for fantasy, it's too... It's too uh, too much of an iffy situation. Oh, but that, was, Anthony, that was against the 49ers. Anthony, D, wait, Anthony, wait for yeah. the Cowboys. How many running backs who actually have potential are on the waiver wire? Almost nothing. Almost nothing. So every week that goes by, there's going to be even less potential. So if you can pick up Kenny Gainwell, who actually has potential, you pick him up. Six carries, 14 yards, two receptions, 18 yards is not enough potential for me to even look so, at it. Yeah, I'll okay, just so, keep somebody so, on my team. Uh, okay. I would let, rather a Carlos but, Hyde but, because but Anthony, a guy Anthony, like James stop, Robinson stop, is uh, not Anthony, producing. Carlos Anthony, Hyde. Anthony, stop. You, you have to imagine that if you're looking for a running back on the waiver wire, it's because you need a running back. So right. Kenneth Gainwell is, is someone you would want to pick up. I get it. If okay. You, if you well, have all you, the running backs, obviously yeah. you're not going to go get. Keep, but again, well. you're you're unnecessarily creating banter because I didn't I didn't give you I didn't give First you crap all, for wait wait wait. There's I didn't no give such you thing as unnecessary banter. Move, I didn't give you crap for not wanting Adam Humphreys and these guys because it makes sense. You made good points. I think there are better the the. The pickings I, are I slim. You, I asked you. I said. I, I said, said Gainwell. I don't think has potential because of the okay, stat so line. Who else on the? Who? What other running backs? So on the way I would say have potential. Carlos Hyde, because we just said James Robinson. He was in our guillotine list. And did, did Carlos are, Hyde even get any touches this week? What's his situation? Um, he yeah, didn't sure get he didn't touches this week. So he got no touches, zero points. I would still rather because Miles Sanders 
on Philly. I think, I think still you need the to step guy. back from being on the defensive on this banter and really consider. I'm not being on the defensive. I just Carlos disagree not with a good pickup. Kenneth Gainwell. But we just wanted to guillotine James Robinson. So I would say if a guy were willing to guillotine and contemplate dropping, which is your guillotine segment. Yeah, but, yeah, but that I doesn't say, mean Carlos Hyde's going to get touches. Urban Meyer's not I listening would, to our podcast. I would rather. Are you sure? <laughs> I would rather Carlos Hyde than Gainwell. I'm just a saying, lot of new listeners. I would rather Carlos Hyde. I'd you heard rather it here first. wait. Anthony yeah. would prefer Urban Meyer. If you're listening, um, <laughs> some you points. Don't don't play Carlos Hyde because we don't want Anthony to be right here. But um, Anthony, Carlos Hyde. You ever you remember the Magic School Bus? Yes. The show. Yes. Carlos. Like that's how, that's what you're going to be saying if you. I don't remember that. Carlos. I, 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 I had no I idea. Do not the Carlos. That See that Carlos was the goofy one, always getting into trouble or saying things, saying funny things. I thought you were like, going to do something completely different. I had no idea that that was it. But from here on out, that is uh, how we'll have to say Carlos Hyde's name when yep. he gets when he gets zero points every week. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so he got the same amount of points last week, but it's zero points. But zero points. I used them last year. He won't help win me some the, uh, weeks when the, uh, the, the starter on the Carlos team. The is actually a zero. <laughs> so listen to them. You can pick up Gainwell if uh, you agree with them. And if not, go look for somebody else. I don't think Gainwell is going to be that useful. And you're not going to want to start him no. because you never know when he's going to go off. He's more so useful than a guy sitting on the bench. Well, we'll see. I think I think we'll see him, we'll see him have a game against Dallas because I, I, I think Dallas will be winning. Uh, Philly will have to come back, and we're going to see them uh, pass the ball a lot, and Kenny Game will be using the passing game. Sure. I think we Let's might see. see it this week. How about a Kenneth Gainwell versus Carlos Hyde? No. Your bet for this week. <laughs> no, Anthony immediately, no. <laughs> yeah, because what? Carlos we're, Hyde we're, has to score one point. We have to, what, we're going to be hoping for who gets six points and who gets zero? Like, a, yeah. it's a silly beer bet. Put your beer where your mouth is. You're not yeah. picking them up to start any of them. If you, why not? not I just yet. told. I just not told yet, you. I start, I you would start. You would start. I already did. This I just. I just said that I did. I picked him up to replace Josh Jacobs. So I say that he will get below ten fantasy points. Probably. Okay, so why would you start somebody that's going to give you below 10 fantasy points? Put in a why receiver. Would, why would you pick up Carlos Hyde who's getting below one point? But I didn't say start. <laughs> but I didn't say start. What's your him. argument said, here? What's your position? My Kenneth, argument. Kenneth Gainwell actually has an opportunity in this league and has an opportunity to be relevant in fantasy. He's already shown it. He's getting touches and he's doing well with his opportunities. Carlos, so, H- Carlos yeah, Hyde is on a team. As well. Carlos Hyde is on a team where the running back is not doing well and they didn't even put him in. They're just like, oh. You so, better, better left on the bench. Pal. I said stash Carlos Hyde. I didn't say start him. I say do not start Kenneth, Kenneth Gainwell. Put in a receiver at flex instead of putting in Kenneth Gainwell. That's what I recommend. Yeah, sure. I, I also recommend that. But we were talking waiver wire. I would say go get Kenneth Gainwell because the potential on, on the waiver wire for running backs after week three is going to be dismal. So you might as well get somebody who has potential now than having to trade for it later or you know scraping whatever... Um, you know, bottom of the barrel uh, running backs are there in week four or five. Uh, I, I don't know why you wouldn't take the opportunity to pick up Kenneth Gainwell. Yes, because we haven't seen the best of Gainwell yet, but we've definitely seen the best of Hyde. Yeah, like um, three oh, years, oh, ago, I, I, years So ago. I do. Yeah. I actually do have one better. So this will be perfect discussion, <laughs> okay. and I'll, us, I'll, we'll, do, we'll do this one for our beer bet because we were a little skeptical wait. on it. JD McKissick is available in three leagues that I have, and I think with the uh, the way Antonio Gibson's been playing and being potentially hampered by injury, we haven't seen anything this week. I say start JD McKissick over Kenneth Gainwell this week. Okay, Anthony. Again, you're missing everything we're saying. No, no one has said that you must start Kenneth Gainwell, but you should get him off the waiver wire. Okay. The same so, way you should get J.D. McKissick so, off the so waiver wire. So now I'm saying yes. get J.D. McKissick over Kenneth Gainwell. If you have both options, go McKissick over Gainwell. And you can actually start McKissick this week because my argument for starting him this week is that the, Pitts, uh, the Buffalo D stops the number one running back on other teams. He's stopped Najee Harris and he stopped Miles Gaskin well, two weeks in- they stopped every Miami Dolphin yeah every Miami <laughs> like Dolphin big zero. so we saw that McKissick gets in on the two-minute drill and um yeah uh they they use him to for the hurry up offense as well so I think this is the week uh to play him because they'll be playing from behind and they'll need McKissick on the field yeah so I uh, I don't disagree but 
I think Kenneth Gainwell probably strong, has more long term long term potential as the season goes on. Like. Yeah. We'll see. I agree with that take, JD, for this week, but again, the Gainwell long term prospects. Very exciting. I like week two. Week once you hit week three, now we got trends. So like next week we're gonna be announcing trends. Once you have three games under your belt, now it's like it's not just a one off. It's uh, if things happen three in a row. You know, fool me once, Ooh. fool me three times. <laughs> Call me Carlos. I gotta get if anybody's seen it. Jordan showed it to me the other day. It's a hilarious thing of uh, George W. Bush uh, misquoting that. The fool me once, shame on me. Fool me twice, shame on you. But he he gets it wrong. <laughs> it's, it's it's the silliest. You can find it on YouTube. It's uh, you'll have a good laugh. I like it. I like it. All right. Any other waivers? Uh, if we want to talk uh, QBs, streamers, uh, streamers, streamers. Oh, Anthony, you had some great ones. Hit yeah. us, Anthony. Pick we a, all agree. Pick with a quarterback these. who like fizzled out a couple of years ago, and let's pick him up off the waivers. <laughs> um. So. Uh, so Kirk Cousins, who's had 20 points two weeks in a row, and Jameis Winston, who you told to stash, gave you a terrible week. I'll go Kirk Cousins, 100%, who's also finished yeah. in the top 12 last year. Right, Dave? He this did. Is why, something are we... what? What? why are you shooting shot? No, shooting I'm just looking for confirmation because me. I remember you brought up that stat. Kirk did. Uh, Kirk did. Yeah. Kirk um, often finishes right around that spot, and everyone's like, "What? Huh? 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 And like nobody has him because they Kirk throw the ball. Sense. Like uh, Adam Thielen, Dalvin Cook, Justin Jefferson are are yeah. the very KJ Osborne. Osborne. There yeah. you go. Um, so you can ignore Kirk Cousins. I mean, he usually fizzles out towards the end of the year. Uh, he's got it's the start of the season. He's got all that energy God right dang now. It. God dang it! And uh, yeah, and, and Teddy Vikings? Bridgewater. Okay, two great. Let's the Vikings yeah. are playing the Seahawks. Yes. Seahawks it's gonna be a shootout. Just, Seahawks love shootouts. You know, they're like, let's make it challenging for Russ. Um, too challenging this past week, losing to the Titans, but that'll be a good pick. And Teddy Bridgewater, you say? I do say Teddy of Bridgewater. The very good of the AFC uh West West leading Denver Broncos. They are ahead of the division. Uh, who would have thought that? Chiefs, Chargers? No, it's the Denver And guess Broncos. who they're playing this week? They're playing the Jets. <laughs> yeah. So these are two very strong streamers this week. And yeah, I I'll think stream our... the Denver defense as well. Yeah. Uh, if they're not already picked up. Oh, and, yeah, they're picked uh, up. I, oh, we that, suggested to, to draft them. In, draft them, yeah. In our draft a... episode because they had a great early season schedule. <clears throat> You're welcome. And the last uh, streamer I would give is Sam Darnold playing on Thursday Night Football against the terrible Houston uh, Texans who have Davis Mills at quarterback. There are sure to be interceptions on the Houston side. Uh, Houston throwing interceptions. And Sam Darnold, I think, will have an easy week. He's averaged, I think, 18 points two weeks in a row. I mean, we usually look for that at 20 points. But... Yeah, 20 is the baseline. Yeah. So I would go with the other two over him. So defenses on that note to stream, Carolina jumps off the board immediately. I think Denver's rostered. Carolina might not be. They're going up against Houston, playing on Thursday. Uh, the Arizona Cardinals defense against Jacksonville. What do you guys think about that one? Oh, yeah, 100%. Yep, got to be. I mean, Jacksonville, Jacksonville and the Jets uh, play everybody against them. Benny and the Jets. Um, and then who else do we like? I mean, <laughs> Giants, Falcons, I don't like anybody in that matchup. I mean, if Tua's not playing for the Dolphins, maybe the Raiders' defense. I don't know. 100%. Wild. Raiders' defense is pretty good. Yeah. 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 That could be a play. That I mean, play. Jacoby, Jacoby was a starting quarterback, so he's not, he's not your classic backup quarterback, but I think he will struggle. Yeah. Yes. Agreed. Okay. So we like those. Car Raiders, Carolina. And Cardinals as streaming options. I think yeah. the other good matchups probably roster defense. We recommended to pick up uh, after week one the Cardinals defense. We said they could be a sneaky D. Um, played really well week one. Had a shootout this week, but uh, they got some talented uh, defensive players on their team. They, they do, can... and it's it's all about turnovers. Yes, exactly. And and sacks. if you can get a turn, yeah, turnover sacks and points. If you can get a like a, a pick six, or uh, if you're playing DST, defense special teams, get like some sort of return. Rondell Moore. Whoo, Rondell Moore returning a 
kicks for uh, Arizona, and he is explosive. Mm-mm. I think, yeah, the Christian Kirk take, I think it's Rondell Moore. It's going to be it's Rondell Moore. I, I don't know. Well, I, was, I saw something interesting that uh, Arizona doesn't – they don't move anyone around the field, so it really just depends on who they're being matched up with. Mm-hmm. So to take into consideration that, um, you know, it, it'll be – all over the place. Who's going to be? Uh... Yeah, because you know DeAndre Hopkins is going to be the guy, and then it, it can change from week to week. I will say Rondell Moore, I guess off the back of that huge touchdown he had, but he is uh, leading all NFL receivers in yards after the catch currently. And, uh, well, we forgot another stream. I guess people stream tight ends. The only noteworthy one I would say is uh, Jack Doyle, just because of the targets, but... Oh, it's gosh, rough, it's rough on the waiver wire. I'm so sorry. I'm so yeah. sorry. If you oh, want nobody, that route, nobody listening that. to this podcast was streaming tight ends, hopefully. Right. I have Darren Waller in so many leagues. And <laughs> I love it. I love it. The one league, our, our main league, though, I have Gerald Everett and John on the bench. And I'm just like, last week I was like, ah, which one do I put? Which one do I put? And I should have put John who put Gerald. <laughs> just kidding. Like, I'm going to flip a coin from now on. Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay, that does it for streamers and waivers. You heard it here first. Um, very exciting. So can we move on to our final segment or our final segment? There's two more. Really. I don't know. How long have we been going on for? It feels like we've been going for some time here. 106, my friend. Well, do we have do we have time for a final segment? Oh yeah, it's not a it's not a it's not a complicated one. It's a short okay. question. Even well, the just simplest in case, things for us. Just in case someone brings up Carlos Hyde during this <laughs> segment. Okay, no, it's important because uh, it's waiver wire show. So we will start our segment of they said it on Reddit. Oh man, I didn't even know what happened there. That was wild. Yeah, it was. Uh, <laughs> let's just move on. Yeah. <laughs> um, best under. Uh, so this one's coming from user Big Sexy eighty nine. Uh, oh, Moose, it's Moose. You got to stop writing in. Okay, like leave it to actual people. <laughs> Um, best underperforming running backs to get at a discount now. Which RB has not lived up to the hype? Who would be most likely to improve at some point this season? Who could be acquired for the cheapest trade? Uh, first name that comes to mind is Miles Gaskin. So you uh, still believe in him? Well, that, I that, mean, that, out of out of the underperforming running yeah. backs, uh, he, he has the potential to be better. And you could probably get him very cheap right now. You can get him cheap. Um, speaking of which, Moose hit me up in that league that I guess I offered you, Gaskin. But no, it's not happening. <laughs> it's, it's, I'll get it's super the, cheap. It's the most ridiculous trade anyone's ever offered me. Okay, no, I know it was pretty cheeky, but I'll offer you Gaskin for something. Anyways, um, Jonathan Taylor. My whole team is better than Miles Gaskin. I don't need Miles Gaskin. J- your whole team is not better than Miles Gaskin. Cream Hunt. I don't know. Uh, Jonathan Taylor. Jonathan Taylor coming off a really bad week. Uh, you can't get him for cheap, but you can get him for a lot cheaper than he will go for, and he's going to play Tennessee. My, he's got a Houston coming up on the schedule. He's got two Tennessees. He's got a Jets and a Jacksonville later on. He will eat it up, and they got no other choice but to give it to him. So I, I still think you're paying through the roof, though, for, for Taylor. Like, no one's going to give you Taylor. Yeah. I mean, did, Never you know. Can, yeah, but you consider somebody spent their first round pick on them in, in redraft leagues. Uh, no one's going to give Taylor up uh, unless you give something of equal value. How about Antonio Gibson? Yes. So that was going to be my guy. Um, I mean, he had a slow start last year, too. Um, they just need to get rolling. We know Washington's not a uh, high powered offense. We know it's going to be game script and matchup based. So, and and we mentioned he's most likely hampered by injury. And I think now I, I've been offered him in a bunch of leagues. It's just the player wants to swap my my best running back for Antonio Gibson. I mean, I'll just trade disc. you. Yeah. Just so disc. it's not going to happen. But uh, a lot of people are looking to offer him up. You should. Um... Uh, two guys you should probably try and pick up right now, Derek Henry and Aaron Jones. You could probably probably get them uh, real cheap, real cheap right now. <laughs> um, I think uh, two other realistic candidates here. Uh, one we've already spoken about at length in this episode, James Robinson. For sure, people are super hyped about James Robinson, disappointed with him not performing so well. I'm sure you could scoop him up for uh, way cheaper than, um, you know, than what he probably should be going for. And 
he could turn it around. Well, how do we feel about Saquon? The Moose calls him politely one yardly. Well, that's that's all he was really doing. Um, you you trade him? I no, have to, to pick him up. Would you you can get him for cheap? Yeah, right yeah. Now. So I actually I wouldn't because I'm just very low on him. But I think most people should because I'm still an optim, optimist for I'll, other I'll be honest, people. If the Saquon Barkley owner was trying to offload him for pennies, I'd pick him up. But I, I wouldn't. Yeah. I wouldn't give up any of my assets for Saquon Barkley. I don't, uh, not until I see it. I mean, not only, not only did he miss a year of football, which we know is devastating at the running back position. He's also coming back off the knee surgery, which throughout the history of the NFL has taken athletes quite a bit of time to come back from, or just to get back up to the speed they were at. Saquon Barkley is inhuman. He, uh, he had a couple injuries where he healed in record time. And, uh, you know, we've seen some of these NFL players do it, you know, uh, take, for example, Carson Wentz supposed to be out, you know, seven to 12 weeks. And then three weeks later, the guy's running again. So I think the hope is always that Saquon Barkley is, uh, you know, going to come back and be Saquon Barkley. But honestly, week two, his week two performance was frankly a little disappointing and underwhelming. So I think if, the Saquon Barkley owner is trying to offload him for pennies. Go for it. And he's playing Atlanta this week. I think he's gonna he's gonna go off. Remember, he played very tough Washington front seven that he was up against. Um, and that one that one forty one yard run he broke off made me look look like the old Saquon. Just saying, just saying. Okay. Anyone else? So Antonio Gibson probably top of the list for us. Who says Miles Gaskin? I like this James Robinson one too. Yeah. James Robinson, yeah. Um, very good, very very good. Maybe, maybe um, Son- Sonny Michelle. Yeah, yeah, so, he's not going to be. He, he, yeah, he'll never be great, but he'll be usable if uh, Henderson's out. Well, what, um, what was the question? Again? Are we looking for guys who are going to be all stars or just better? No, just best underperforming running backs to get a discount now. Someone well, doesn't live that uh, so, so, so again, yeah. if you're if you're the J.K. Dobbins, Travis Etienne, this kind of if you if you uh, ran into that situation, I mean, I don't think, like we said, the waiver wire is pretty dismal. So if if you're desperate for a running back and you can get Sonny um, Michelle at a discount, Javonta Williams, it's coming. Yeah, it is coming. He hasn't blown the the socks off of anyone yet, but it is coming. But again, um, I don't think anyone's uh, selling him low. I think like if they've listened to us, they know you hang on to your rookies. He he hasn't been useless. Um, so I think people should hold on him. Yeah. Dave, you're not going to like this one because it involves someone potentially getting injured. But uh, if you can acquire Alexander Madison, Dalvin Cook was dealing with ankle injuries. <laughs> yeah. So uh, if you can... Madison, if, if, I, if Madison when... I've seen Madison on the waiver wire. So if he's on the if he's on if he's on your waiver wire, which yeah. highly unlikely, he's yeah. one of the top handcuffs in the league, so he's probably on someone's team. But if you can acquire Alexander Madison or get him off the waiver wire, I would suggest looking into it and see how how low you can get him for. Even though the when Cook was out last year, Madison was very underwhelming and like did didn't do much with his uh, with his opportunity. Yeah, but I, I think he he just needs the opportunity. He needs more than one game, you know. So. Uh, Okay. I, I, I would, I would go get, I mean, if you, uh, I mean, he's the best handcuff to have, right? So if you already have a handcuff on your team, replace him with Madison, you're still in a pretty good situation. Okay. Jermont Williams and Melvin Gordon had the exact same points last game, both had 13 carries as Anthony mentioned on the podcast, but Jermont Williams more than doubled his yardage with the same amount of carries. It's coming. I'm telling you. Yeah, yeah. All right, I think that's about does it. Um, guys, I was having a beer for you guys. Um, Raised by Wolves, Driftwood, IPA. Um, our boy Connor, the bartender, may may find himself um, rolling up uh, to Driftwood pretty soon, the brewery. They're opening up okay. a new location with a resto. Very cool. Next time you guys visit, just saying, could be a whole thing. Boomsies. Nice. What a cool can, Raised by cool. Wolves. I, uh, I got a classic Heineken. Same as always. And I got another Cronenberg 1664. Woo! 
1664, the year the guillotine was invented. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, goodness. It's, it's for sure not. Well, maybe. I don't know. No. Well, that's not the French Revolution, but. Yeah, but mm -hmm. it doesn't mean you said when the guillotine was invented. I know. It could have been earlier. I know. You're right. You're right. You guys watching anything cool on TV or have any uh, words of wisdom? Nope. Just been watching football and, oh, wow. uh, and that's it. Netflix oh, I series. watched. I, I lied. I watched. Uh, I watched the new season of Rick and Morty. It was fantastic. I never got into Rick and Morty. I never. Oh, so I sick. should. Eh. It's really good. Uh, really good. Does anyone want to take a guess on when the guillotine was invented? <laughs> no. Yeah. Uh, Seventeen twelve. No, I'm uh, gonna go. I'm gonna go somewhere closer to the 1800s. Uh, well, French Revolution. French Revolution was late 1700s. So, so, so 1792, I guess oh, Moose nice. takes it. Well, he didn't put a year, but that's okay. Well, he said. Close so they to really 1800s. did invent it in the French Revolution to chop off the heads of the nobles, the elite. Yeah. Okay. Um, Netflix series, Untold. It's like a different story every time. I think it's old, but I just happened upon it. And there's some cool ones. One being the Malice at the Palace, the story about the Indiana Pacers Detroit Pistons brawl where Ron oh, Artest, yeah. so, now known as Meta World Peace, went into the stands, the whole thing. Stephen Jackson cool. as well. Stephen Jackson, the whole thing. Um, and uh, the other one is <laughs> based on the supposedly the true Tony Soprano. And uh, this the real life Tony Soprano bought his son a professional hockey team uh, to run at age 17. And the shenanigans that ensue. All true story. Well, the, it, new, the wild, new movie, uh, the new movie that's coming out, the many the new Tony York. Soprano movie, yeah, hmm. of like young Tony Soprano. Yeah, it's his yeah, son. It's, cool. it's um, James Gandolfini's son. Yeah. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah, yeah. oh, that's nice. Also, Matrix Four. How have we not talked about this? No, it's going to be a disaster. What? Keanu Reeves. <laughs> let's go. I mean, Wait, it can't be worse listen, than two and three. Listen, there should never have been a fourth Indiana Jones. There should never have been. Hold on, that Shia LaBeouf one was really good. <laughs> <laughs> some things, some things just need to end as a trilogy. Yeah. Like what's I agree. what's the story? Like it 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 ended perfectly. You know why they do put why him do back in to... the Matrix um, after he beats Smith and saves the world? And he's like, "Hey, we're cool, we're cool." Yeah. He gets put back in the Matrix, doesn't remember a thing. And then he keeps having like dreams. We don't need and, this. And uh, Neil Patrick Harris is his keeps giving them the blue. There's pill. two reasons why we don't need this. Cool. We don't need this. One, don't ruin the trilogy. Two, yeah. it looks like hold on, the it trilogy doesn't... ruined the trilogy. They could have stopped after one. One was perfect. Two and three were like it was kind of cool, but it's like ah. Okay, enough. Dave. So once they did it, <laughs> keep going, keep going, give me more. No, 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 because no. You, you want the matrix vibe if you're going to come out with a matrix movie this has an action movie vibe it looks he looks like he's john wick you know they could have changed his look a little bit it's just i think it's going to be pretty to watch but it's not going to have that matrix vibe which it, uh, i don't want any part of like i'm probably still going to watch and, it because i mean King you're right it, it'll be it's it's not going to be uh, any mortal Kombat. that's for sure no mortal Kombat was a disaster so I was that it. so was that marvel movie what? you told me that was good it was a disaster I watched Black Shang Widow. Chi? Black, Black Widow was okay. terrible. Oh, the worst. I could have told you that. But Mortal Kombat was good. Uh, I, I watched it. on the way back on the on the plane back out so west. Bad. So bad. And I know, but I will say it is the best Mortal Kombat movie ever made in 2021. Which is not saying much, honestly. No. Uh, if well, you what take, was your if expectation you take, for you, for it? To well, be like substantially higher. higher. Substantially higher. To have it? actors oh, who've then. acted in anything before. They, they did. To, to even just mm. remotely have a storyline. Oh, like, well, it was just... that, that was that that was high expectation. Wow. They the franchise has so much money. Like they could they could have oh, yeah, money sure. at people to write an actual story. I, I would like that, but the real realistically, people just want to see um what's it called? Uh fatalities and yeah, but you, but you, can, you can do that along a linear storyline this was all I over agree. the place 
I one agree. minute there's portals, one minute Goro's at someone's house. Like it's just all over the place. Yeah, just, it made no sense. Just made no sense. And I, I agree, but I wasn't going was in terrible. there with high expectations. It was one of those things they where they're in like one part of the world and they're like, oh no, the bad guy has uh, somehow gotten to the other part of the world and it just cuts and they're there. Like yeah. the whole the whole traveling across the world just like boom, we're there, teleported. Is well, that did happen in all the video games, by the way, where the Nether Realm they try to screw with the actual rules of Mortal Kombat and they go and try to ruin it and go to Earth Realm. So that is accurate, but sending Goro, Goro's yeah, you, the. You get what uh, I'm saying. I don't know. You get, you get the, the point I'm saying. It's just... It looked like uh, the actors uh, and the writers we're all people who would have uh, picked up Carlos Hyde on waivers this week. It's not, <laughs> oh. not good sense. <laughs> yeah. But like Dave, we talk about not you, a good movies. judgment call. You, nobody should have been going in there. I would love for them to have a good story, but you're not going in there expecting a good story. So, all right. So here's the last thing I'm going to say on the matrix Four. one of the things I loved about the original matrix trilogy is that for the most part, all the actors and actresses were, sort of unknowns people who maybe hadn't had big predominant roles and but they were still like decent decent actors and you weren't sort of expecting anything this new matrix 4 looks like it's just going to be riddled with cameos of people who are way too excited to be in a matrix movie and it's not going to be that great all right you heard it here first folks which which bums me out which bums me out because I'm going to go see it, and I hope it's awesome. I really do, but I don't have high hopes. Keep your fingers crossed. And put your best gut forward. And hey, as it approaches hey, winter that's my, season. That's my line. I know. Yeah. I'm just, can't steal okay. this line. Yeah. And as we approach uh, winter, and it gets to be below, way below 295 Kelvin, maybe, you know, turn on your heat, um, put on a winter coat, maybe wear a scarf. I don't know. But as always. Hey, in your house? Whatever you got to do. <laughs> Maybe Sub-Zero's there. As always, thanks for listening. We'll see you next time. Ciao.